Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on. Today, we are looking at the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra GMT Chronograph, 44 millimeters in stainless steel. You'll have to forgive the appearance of this one, but having just been extensively cared for, the protective seals are still on it. Now, the bottom line is on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. This is every inch the modern complicated sports watch. You can see there's a lot going on on the dial and the bezel, but on my wrist, the fit's pretty secure. There's not a lot going on. Omega designs this watch in the same fashion as many modern watchmakers, understanding that you can design a bigger watch, but you can't design a bigger customer. The fit is quite secure, and ultimately, the ergonomic case speaks for itself. I can tell you it's excellent. This will be a matter of individual preference, whether you like the big watch look. 44 millimeters, it definitely has presence. And at 14.5 millimeters thick, it definitely has height. So this is probably not one that's going to play nicely with a dress cuff. While looser long sleeves will have a little bit of a running start over that convex bezel form, in general, this is a sports watch designed to be worn accordingly. But it does feature an outstanding quality stainless steel three-link bracelet with a high-quality double deployant double trigger, contrasting polished and brushed clasp, very secure. This is the kind of retention mechanism that I love to see on a modern sports watch on a bracelet. Twin triggers, double deployant, makes it more secure when closed. There's no chance of it accidentally popping open as with a friction fit clasp. And being double deployant, it's a little bit easier to fit the clasp and close it when it's on a smaller wrist than with a single deployant. And again, the contrast between the brushed outer portions of the clasp and the polished inner portions just speaks to the attention to detail and the quality that Omega invests in this watch. But Omega also invests a considerable amount of engineering savoir-faire in the watch. Let's talk a little bit about the aesthetics and then we'll dive into the movement and the functions. Now you can see that in a lot of ways the case is a development of Omega's traditional beveled flank integrated lug sports watch. Now this look with the beveled lugs has been on Omega sports watches, uh, both Speedmasters and Seamasters since roughly the mid-1960s. And here it's nicely integrated with high polished bevels and then brushed flanks of the case. And you can see that's on both sides. Now this watch having received recent refinishing to factory standards shows outstanding definition as well as luster on the polish and a nice matte gleam on the brushed portions. Moving inboard, you can see this watch, true to its name, is a true GMT. And I mean it's a GMT in the sense that the Rolex GMT Master is a GMT. Namely, you have a bi-directional 24-hour bezel. So if you want to set it to the 24-hour hand independently and then offset from Greenwich Mean Time, you can tell not one, not two, but up to three time zones simultaneously using the ability to set the 24-hour hand as well as the local 12-hour hand independently. There is a date window. It's a tri-register chronograph, and it features all the toys. But before I get into what those toys are, I've talked a little bit about the complications as they relate to the hands on the dial and the bezel, but I want to talk a little bit about the aesthetic treatment of the dial itself. Now, the latest Omega standards, diamond polished applied indices with abundant loom. This is a true sports watch, fully loomed. That much you see, and you can see that the 60-minute scale outboard of the central dial is actually on a separate, slightly lower plane, so it falls away from the main dial, but it's the main dial that's really the standout here. It features a striation, a vertical guilloche pattern that Omega calls teak deck concept. This being a Seamaster Aquaterra, it's the more genteel brother of the Planet Oceans and the Seamaster Professional Diver 300s. The Aquaterra is more versatile. It's more discreet in its details, although full-sized, the watch is more elegant. The combination of the white metal and the black and gray tones with that striated teak concept dial is designed to evoke vintage yacht decking. And it's a little bit more compatible with looser dress cuffs, with sport jackets. It's the kind of watch you could wear, for instance, to a yacht club. Just make sure you loosen up those French cuffs. Now the bottom line is the presentation is outstanding on the front, but the Aquaterra, again, being more of a dual role semi-formal Seamaster technical reference gives you a trade-off. 150 meter, so roughly 500 foot water resistance, still plenty for all but the most extreme diving, but in exchange for losing a little bit of hermeticity, you get a beautiful presentation on the back as well. 
and this is one of the few outstanding highly water resistant sports watches to feature a full sapphire display case back and within that sapphire display case back you can see the excellent finishing on an Omega Caliber 3603 that boasts a true high horology pedigree. Now these are based on the Piguet chronograph calibers developed for use by Blancpain during the 1980s. This is the movement that inspired the Rolex Caliber 4130 in the Daytona. This has been one of the most influential and celebrated ultra-fine high horology movements of the last 30 years, but Omega definitely makes it its own. First of all, with unique engraving and finishing, Cote de Genève linear on the winding mass and the bridges. It also features gold-plated engraving and a beautiful heat-blued screw right at the center of the winding rotor. Now all of the, hopefully you can see this on the iPhone, but all of the Cote de Genève feature intermediate texturing that's quite beautiful, and there is quite a good deal of mirror quality anglage on the bridges themselves. This is definitely a cut above your standard ETA caliber. But when I say Omega makes it its own, I'm not just talking about finish, I'm talking about mechanics. Now, whereas the Piguet chronographs feature a power reserve of about 38 to 40 hours, this one features a superior 52 hour power reserve and a few tricks that are all Omega. First, a free sprung balance. You can see the stud holder right there all adjustments are performed using micrometric regulation screws, so this is a free-sprung escapement suitable for a sports watch. You don't get that on the basic Paget caliber. You do get it on this caliber 3603 coaxial movement. Again, it's not going to be moved by a shock that could displace the mobile regulator on the base movement of the Paget. The Omega is insulated against that kind of shock-induced timing variation. But I've also given part of the game away when I mentioned that this is a coaxial movement. Still an Omega exclusive, the coaxial escapement promises better long-term timing stability, reduced maintenance. It's one of the few alternative escapement technologies available for less than six figures on the modern luxury watch market. Introduced in 1999, developed by the legendary independent watchmaker George Daniels and perfected over time by Omega, it's still one of the most innovative and perplexing, quite frankly, mechanical solutions in watchmaking. It still beguiles, it's still unique, it's still intriguing and impressive over 10 years after its introduction. And you get that with the Omega Aquaterra GMT chronograph that I'm holding here. Other features that make this a superior timepiece include column wheel selection for the chronograph, the column wheel being a traditional mechanism for selecting the stop, the start and the reset functions of a chronograph gives you more tactile feedback. It's, it's more pleasurable to use because first of all, it's harder to tune, more expensive to make, and thus less commonly seen. But you get that in this caliber 3603. What you also get is vertical clutch engagement, which is kind of a gift of the original Piguet caliber. A vertical clutch allows you to engage the chronograph seconds hand without a jump, whereas a horizontal clutch will cause the second hand to jump upon starting, stagger upon stopping, and occasionally fail to reset to the index at 12. With a vertical clutch, you get far more precision. Plus, because the vertical clutch can run continuously without wearing down the horizontal clutch gears of a conventional system, if you do prefer to have center seconds like a normal time-only watch, you can run the chronograph continuously and just use the chronograph seconds hand as your center seconds, constant seconds hand with no hazard to the movement. To top it all off, the Caliber 3603 hacks when you pull the crown for precise synchronization and it's a COSC rated Swiss chronometer. So precision is tested and excellent. This is a watch that features an intriguing combination of features, refinement, aesthetic pleasures, and of course, in this particular case, outstanding condition. Check out this Omega Seamaster Aquaterra GMT chronograph, 44 millimeters in stainless steel, a true sports watch all-star, a watch that can essentially do it all on our website, Watch You Want.